Hi guys, how you doing? Hope you're all well. So this video has been painful to make. I mean, I wanted to do one on a full voltage regulator with an AC input, which is this. Um, and yeah, after about nine hours of trying, I didn't get anywhere, so I gave up. And so I've moved on to a more basic one, which is supposed to be a Zener voltage regulator. I mean, it is a Zener voltage regulator. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. It's not too difficult, actually. This isn't too bad. It's harder when you're trying to do an AC input. I couldn't figure it out. But with just a basic DC input, which I'm going to use 12 volts, it works out well. So that's what we're going to do in this video. And then hopefully in the next video, I will hopefully figure out how to do um, a fully rectified AC input into uh, a straight DC voltage. But it's tough. It is tough. Anyway, so regarding Zener voltage regulators, I've found that there's so many videos on these on YouTube with so many calculations and for me the like if you start explaining a circuit by going straight into the maths i immediately turn off because you're just going in calculating how we get this resistor value calculating the maximum power needed for the zener diode calculating the load current and what happens if the load current changes blah blah blah, blah. too much for me like tell me what the circuit does first and foremost so I, that's what I'm gonna do with this video. We're not gonna have any maths bar like maybe one tiny equation if I get time at the end <laughs> But yeah, so that's what we'll do in this video and then yeah, this is jump straight into it Okay, so in terms of a voltage regulator like what is a voltage regulator? So you've seen in my last video we did a halfway rectifier and we did a four-way rectifier So we was getting you know that kind of bumpy almost DC signal so the purpose of a voltage regulator is to take that kind of like bumpy signal and make it into a straight regulated proper DC signal that's the purpose of it so the definition I found on online which I like is that it keeps the output voltage constant so the voltage regulator keeps the out output voltage which is this this voltage here across the load resistor it keeps this voltage constant regardless to how much you vary the input voltage or some regulators how much the load current changes so you can have this be variable like this or you can have the input current be variable and this load voltage or this output voltage will stay the same so you got v out here plus or minus right so if i've got 10 volts here this because it is zener diode will always be 5 volts even if i make this 8 volts if i make it 6 volts if I make it 9 volts, 18 volts, doesn't matter about the input voltage here, my output voltage is going to be 5 volts. And so that's what, Zen, that's what a voltage regulator does. Okay, so in terms of the voltage regulators, there's two different types of regulation, and then there's two types of connections. So here I've got, this is the different types of voltage connect, sorry, the voltage regulator connections. And this is the different type of regulations. So let's, let's start with the regulations. So you have line regulation and you have uh, load regulation. Okay. So the only difference is you can see here in, is this red arrow. Right. So you can see here one regulator, a line regulator. What it will do is it will regulate the output voltage across this load resistor here regardless to how this input changes so it's based on the input the other one does it based upon the load so if i have a motor and the motor is going you know changing speeds and whatnot the voltage across it is going to stay constant regardless to how this changes so that's the only difference there I, i'm only mentioning this and i'm not going to go too deep into it because when i was trying to figure out what type of regulator i'm making you will see these line regulator load regulator series shunt parallel and i think it's nice to just have an idea of okay what do these words mean so if you've seen line line regulation it means that it's regulating the output based upon the variant input if you see load regulation it means it's regulating the output based upon the variant load and that's that's the only difference there so let's go into the different types of connections which is only two so we've got series and we've got shunt I don't know why they call it shunt. Um, my idea of shunt is like the, sh the shunt resistors that I made in another video 
where it was in like series and you use that in order to track the current. They call it shunt and they use that as another word for parallel. To me, like my idea is series and parallel. So anyways, they call it shunt, but you, you there I have seen it as parallel uh, voltage regulator as well. So the only difference is that the voltage regulator, so if you say that, you know, you take this as being my voltage regulator, this is put either in series with the load, right? Or it's put in parallel with the load. And that's that's the only difference really. So just uh, looking at this, can you just have a guess at the screen? Is this series or is this parallel? I mean, hopefully, you know, that should be an easy question for you guys. But obviously, the Zenodiode is in parallel, right? So this would be considered a shunt Zeno regulator. It doesn't help that there's so many different words for different things. Kind of like, I'm guessing it's just because the whole electronics knowledge was built up over hundreds of years from all different countries and so we all get different words for different things but as a learner someone in my position bloody yeah it's confusing man very confusing anyways so you got series voltage regulators and shunt voltage regulators so i'm going to be doing a shunt one in this video but in terms of the series one it means that it's connected in series with the load the regulator itself so you know for example if you're using this but in you know if you had it in series it needs to be able to bear all of the current of the load. So if you have a motor here and it's using two amps of current, then your regulator needs to be able to bear that whole load current. It doesn't have to do the same with the voltage because obviously since they're in series, they have different voltage drops across them. The opposite is true for the shunt where they're gonna have the exact same voltage drop. Then if you've got a high voltage uh, device here as the load, your voltage regulator and for shunt needs to have a high voltage a rating so yeah something to keep in mind there oh uh, so so we may as well move on to shunt so shunt voltage regulator is connected in parallel and so the good thing about these shunt voltage regulators is that they're very good at dealing with high load currents and um, the only thing is the voltage regulator like i said needs to be able to withstand whatever voltage you're going to put across it so yeah uh and yeah that's it i mean i don't think i need to go any deeper into series and sh um shunt or parallel i'm i'm gonna go with parallel but my brain understands parallel better, so I'll just go with parallel. Okay, so onto the actual circuit. So here's what the circuit looks like on a breadboard. I've got my input here and my uh, ground or negative here. And so I've got a resistor here, which is my resistor R1, or you'll see it as RS. And then I've got my Zenodiode, 5.1 volt Zenodiode, D1. And then I've got my load resistor here. So if I want to, for example, drive a motor, I will tap the motor across this resistor and then that will be at the load and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. So let's go through the circuit. So I've got my voltage supply obviously and then I've got RS which is my resistor in series and then I've got my Zenodiode. So whatever voltage I want, is gonna I'm going to set my Zenodiode to this. So I've got a 9 volt Zenodiode for example. So if I had 12 volts here, you just need to make sure that your supply voltage is higher than your Zenodiode rating. Right, that's the only thing you have to make sure. So if I've got 12 volts here at my voltage supply, I can have this at 9 volts and then I'll have 9 volts output across here. Wherever I set this Zenodiode to, then my output voltage is going to be the same. So here, in this case, it's 5.1 volts. So I'm going to get 5.1 volts at the output. Okay, so in terms of this resistor, I had a bit of trouble with it. You need to set this resistor to the right value. And you can do that by trial and error or you can do some calculations for it. Basically, this is a current limiting resistor. You want it so that when there's no load, obviously you're gonna get current going through your Zenodiode and you don't, wanna, you don't wanna burn out your Zenodiode. And you need to limit the current here using this resistor. And this resistor obviously needs to be able to take the voltage drop across it as well. So here I've got five volts drop across my Zenodiode here. If I had 18 volts at the input, then this resistor needs to be able to drop 13 volts because obviously 18, minus 5.1 right so it needs to be able to drop 12.9 volts okay so i'll chuck in a little bit of maths here and uh, i don't know i don't really want to <laughs> but i feel like it makes me a bit more, <laughs> bit more legit and i feel like people are going to ask how do you set the value there for the resistor so this is me preempting the questions that i think i'm going to end up getting in the comments but in order to find your value for this resistor obviously finding the value for your xenodide is obviously just whatever you want for the output because your V out is just going to be equal to VZ. Just, just, it's just always going to be like that, right? 
So how do you find this resistor value? What you want to do is you want to take, firstly, you want to find what the max current through the zener diode is going to be. Okay. And you also want to take what output you want. So I want five volts at my output and my power rating for my zener diode for my one is 0 0.5 watts. I'm guessing yours is going to be the same. This is the one that I'm using. So 0 0.5 watts. Okay. So this is going to, I'm not going to be able to find out what's going to be my current through the zener diode, right? So I just take 0 0.5 watts divided by my five volts, right? Of the voltage drop. And that is a hundred milliamps. So max current through my zener diode can be a hundred milliamps. So to find the resistance value, then you obviously just do V is equal to IR or V divided by I is equal to R, right? Ohm's law. So R is equal to, and then the voltage, the voltage across this resistor is going to be VS, my voltage supply, minus VZ, which is the voltage across the zener, divided by IZ, okay? So that's going to be... My supply voltage, uh, I can go with whatever really. Um, I don't have to pick anything. 7.5 volts. Okay, just whatever. And then take away my zener diode, which will go just go 5 volts. Divide that by IZ, which you already know is 100 milliamps. And that's good. Uh, I'm making a mess here. Let's put it over here. So that gives 2.5 divided by 100 milliamps. That's going to be 25 ohms. So what that means is that the minimum rating that my resistor here needs to be is 25 ohms. And so I don't know why I went with 100 ohms. It's larger than 25. So yeah, just <laughs> 100 ohms. But that's how you can find whatever your minimum value is going to be. It's not. It's just ohms lower, isn't it? Yeah, that's not. That's not too bad. Okay, cool. Let's um, let's do this now. So move it on to the lovely uh, breadboard. Okay, so I explained it already. Let's just keep this here, actually. So here's my input. Let's just... Uh... Alright, so I've got my supply voltage in here, right? So here I've got my resistor, which is the 100 ohm resistor. And then, is it hot? It is actually hot. 10 volts. I've got it at 10 volts right now. I've actually got a fair bit of current. 40 milliamps of current flowing here. What did I say my max current would be? 100 milliamps, okay. So I've got 40 milliamps right now. And that's at 10 volts. So from this resistor, then I've got my zener diode here, coming down here, and then going, so you can see it. It's going here, and then to ground. And then I've got here now my load. So if I wanted to, for example, take this LED and put it across this resistor, you see that it turns on. And so even though I've got 10 volts now, at my um, voltage uh, power supply, that 10 volts, you know, would normally blow this LED. Like this LED is just connected by itself with no resistor. It's in parallel to the to the to the, the load resistor. I mean, I can even take it out. Ah, just burnt myself. What did I burn myself on? Ah, damn, that resistor's hot. <laughs> is that a hundred ohm resistor? Maybe I have a lower resistor there. No, it probably is 100 ohm. I think it's probably like a quarter watt. There you go. So, um, I've got a, a bigger resistor. Hang on. So I've got these much bigger 2 watt resistors, but you can't get, you can't get it in the hole, man. It's really difficult. So I'm just going to connect my supply just straight to resistor like that. It doesn't look great, but it's too hard. I spent like two, three minutes just getting that one in that side. So but yeah, you can see 10 watts, sorry, 10 volts. On that LED with no resistor in there, right? Literally, look like that. Those things there, they're not resistors. Just to show you, so they're not resistors. So I've just got 10 watts across this blue LED, which would normally blow it immediately. Actually, well, I've got the 100 uh, uh, thing resistor obviously there, but this is across the load. So what I can do now is I could actually put a resistor back in here, and then we we can read the voltage across it. And there we go, we've got 5.38 volts. And look at that, constant as well. No fluctuation. Just a nice 5.38 volts. Thanks to our lovely Zener diode. And so you can see we've got the same 5.36. I'm just kind of moving about. But yeah, same voltage across the Zener diode as well as across the load. There you go. All right, so let's chuck 
let's stick a motor in here and this will be a good one so here now my uh, motor is going it'd be nice if I could record the voltage at the same time but my mo my motor is obviously spinning all right, I bugged out here, but what I've, did, what I've done is I've got my motor now between my hands, which is making my hands spasm. <laughs> but what I'm doing is I'm just, I tried to show you guys, but I ended up cranking my voltage up too high. But I'm at 10.8 volts right now. As I increase it, the voltage will increase, but not too much. So it shows it's not perfect. I'm currently at 12 volts now. And then if I keep going, 13.5, 14 volts. So the voltage and the output is barely changing. Right now I'm at 15.4 volts, my hand's spasming. 16, 17, and then my resistor can start to burn out soon. So 17 volts and it's still about the same. So now I'm all the way down to 6.9 volts and I now no longer have uh, five volts. Let's see what voltage I get five volts at. nine nine volts right now yeah so it's not until i go back to 10 volts that i actually get the five volts back cool so that's it that's a shunt zeno regulator i mean don't know if there's anything else uh my hands spasmed yeah i'll put that oh the motor smells <laughs> yeah so that's it i mean is there anything else really i don't know so what I want to do in the next video is I want to figure out how I can put an AC input into here. Is this hot? No, it's not hot. I want to figure out how I can put an AC input into this. If I can do that, that will make me very happy. So it's nice though, like, like you know, that's just a very simple Zeno regulator. I think I might move on from trying to make this work and instead, oh, that's cool. That looks cool. Look at the blue LED. Instead of trying to make this work, I might move on to just more Zeno regulator stuff. There's just so much on the internet. It's very overwhelming. But I'm glad I understand this. Hopefully you guys are glad that you now understand it. And um, I definitely advise you guys, like, try and build these circuits yourself. It's worth it, you know. And you run into, like, so many hiccups that you're like, damn, man, like, why is this so difficult? But in my opinion, that's where, like, a l that's where 90% of the learning comes from. You know, looking and researching for this video, trying to learn how this stuff worked. That was probably the easy part. The hard part was actually building it and trying to actually make it physically work in reality with real components. So um, you just realize like things just aren't the same as they are in simulation. Anyways, enough rambling for me. Take care, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.